Welcome to another video. Today I'm going over my mathematical method for laying out cones two-dimensionally so that I can uh, cut them out of sheet metal. I'm working on a new project that requires some sheet metal work and uh, this is the method I've been using. Let's get right into it. To begin with, you will need dimensions. We are going to be using uh, my drawing for the project. This right here is the cone I want to make. Uh, I have my dimensions here. And that's pretty much all we will need. Now before we get into this, let's take a look at why this actually works. A cone, a three-dimensional object, can be viewed in two dimensions as this, this wide arc kind of thing. Which means that if we blow it up and expand it, it is just a section of a circle. So because the circumference of our cone is equal to the arc length of this section of a circle, we can use uh, circumference formula and arc length formula to figure out what um, theta would be in this case. So with that we can use our protractor and our compass to lay this out on, on a piece of paper to cut it out and then transfer it onto uh, whatever sheet metal we need. Okay, so looking at a cone face on, we get a view kind of like this. We have a rectangle here and a triangle on the side here. Now, because we have a triangle here, we are able to use Pythagorean theorem and trigonometry to find the value of r, this r, the, the total radius, and then use that in our arc length formula to find theta. I didn't quite know how to explain this while going through it, so I did the math and I'll just walk you through my thinking here. All of our dimensions are here, so x double prime is here, that is the radius of the smaller circle. W is what I have called uh, the radius of the larger circle. Y prime here is the height of the cone. X prime can be found by subtracting X double prime from W. Now all of these numbers can be used to find R prime and to do that we just use Pythagorean theorem here and then once we have R prime we can find uh, theta which is here and up here the same value by using uh, inverse tan X prime over Y prime. So now because theta is the same on both triangles here, we can use theta to find r double prime by dividing x double prime by sine theta. And then to find our value of r, our total radius of the, the big circle that we were initially talking about, um, we just add our two radiuses together. That comes out to 47.27. Now if we go back to our original circle, this section, is r, this smaller section is r prime, and this longer section is r double prime. Now because we found the radius of our larger circle, we can go ahead and find the circumference, which comes out to 181.8, and with how we're treating this, we can say that circumference is the same as arc length, which allows us to use our arc length formula and just substitute uh, s with c, and then we simply divide our arc length by the radius, which gives us uh, a radian answer. Multiply it by 180 over pi to turn it to degrees, and this gives us 219.5 degrees. That is the, the angle theta here 
of the large section of the big circle that we wanted to find, right? And so we have our prime, our double prime, the total length of R, and we can use that to lay out our cone on a piece of paper. Now comes the easiest part. We take our paper, mark out zero, mark out 47.3 millimeters, line up 16 and a half millimeters with the end of that line, draw a line through that. Now with our protractor, because our angle is 219 and a half degrees, we subtract 180 from that to find a reference angle, which is 39.5. Find 39.5, which is just shy of 40. Now here's our second arc. And that creates our shape. So here we go, a hopefully dimensionally accurate cone. Uh, let's test it, let's see. I gotta be careful because this is paper. This is giving me 36.4, uh, that is quite close to our, our initial number. And the outside diameter is 57.7. Um, I can live with that. And I mean, it is paper, so it's not perfect. So with this method, you can make uh, cones without having to make uh, tangible models of them and then use those to roll out your shape and trace it. Uh, I found that with that method, I was getting flex, right? Because I need to push to actually be able to do it. I was getting flex and twists and it was throwing off um, my paper tracing. So this is a more accurate, more reliable method of doing that and I, I prefer it. Uh, maybe you don't, and that's fine, but hopefully you guys got something useful out of this. Um, I'm building a jet engine, basically, uh, so I need to make lots of these cones, and this makes the process a lot easier. So hopefully you got something valuable out of this. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.